I'm Logan H. Babin, Jr. Uh, our firm is Logan H. Babin Real Estate, and that is basically myself and my son, uh, who is now the third Logan Babin that's, uh, that's been in charge of our real estate office. We moved from Homa to Little Kaya, and it was like seven miles outside of the city limits of Homa. And it had a shell road. Uh, there was no water lines. We had a cistern. Uh, and since that point, uh, the whole parish has water now, has portable water. Uh, most of it uh, probably has sewer. Uh, and the population has exploded in Terrebonne Parish and it's because of the living conditions are good and, the, uh, and they've always had some, some work to do. And it's been, it's been in the oil and gas business, <laughs> no doubt about it. Uh, that brought people to Terrebonne. At the time that I got here, I had my tonsils taken out at what was called the Ellender Clinic, and that's over on Park. And there was a couple of Dr. Ellenders in there. <laughs> and now we've got, what, two hospitals, huge hospitals. And uh, the medical business is just expanding. Uh, when I came back to home, I left and went to the Air Force Academy. I was in the fourth graduating class from the Air Force Academy, and I just somehow wanted to fly. And uh, that was my ticket to, uh, to being a pilot. And I went, was a pilot in the Air Force, and then I uh, went to work for Pan American World Airways as an airline pilot. I came back home when Pan Am went broke and was flying for the Louisiana Air National Guard, which then was known as the Kunas Militia. <laughs> it's very unpolitical these days. And uh, so my dad called me, I was living in New Orleans. My dad called me, he says, I gotta have some help in the real estate business. He says, if you would, if you quit being a Boy Scout all your life, which is what he referred to my Air Force career, and come back to home, he says, you can make some real money. And uh, I said, okay, I'll give it a shot. And I came back here and joined him in the real estate business. At that time, he was developing what was the largest industrial subdivision in the state of Louisiana. It was, we had 10,000 acres of land that uh, Jim Walter, who owned the Jim Walter Corporation, who owned South Coast Corporation, who was the people that are buying Wallace's sugar. <laughs> and uh, so we started transferring sugarcane land into industrial subdivision. And we, as a test project, we, uh, we developed about uh, 150 acres over on By the Large. And that sold before we ever got it ready to sell, to tell you the truth. Uh, so we decided we would switch over to Grand Kaya and because it had railroad available and we thought that would be a really great asset. Turned out to be nobody ever used it. Uh, but we cut the Cypress Swamp and we dug a slip, which was a mile long and 300 feet wide, as big as a home navigation canal. And we filled up about 400 acres of property and made it to where you could eventually walk on it. And we sold that property to basically oil field, uh, big oil field people like, uh, it was started off as Fluor Ocean Services, then it went to Delta Services, and, uh, 
and now it's um, uh, uh, what is the name? Oh, uh, huh, can't think of the name of it. That's terrible. Huh? Go file and fabrication. Yeah, that's right. So, uh, and it's one of the biggest employers in Terrebonne Parish, other than the school board. <laughs> and uh, so that started off our industrial area, and then it expanded from there. And uh, uh, you can see what's happened to it now. Uh, once again, it was we were using we were using unproductive property uh, at the time and turning it into uh, productive land that the uh, that the what I call tell people friends of mine from the Midwest and the uh, East Coast we're turning it into uh, land that you can use instead of just being places where you can paddle a pirogue around and uh, so that's, uh, I've been doing that since uh, the uh, mid 60s. Uh, I'm still at it, <laughs> even though we don't develop any more uh, property for Jim Walter. Uh, my son is now in the real estate business. We both do appraisals. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, it's been very nice. Last year, uh, was our most, I guess, our most productive year as far as real estate sales are concerned. And that's basically my son and Ed Vice, who uh, works with our office. Uh, they sold a tremendous amount of uh, real estate. There is still a demand for industrial property in Terrebonne Parish. There is more and different industries moving here. I think you had uh, Kenny Woods earlier. Uh, we sold him his first piece of land in, in Terrebonne Parish where our industrial park is. I uh, sold him one acre of land to start K&B Machine Works. And uh, we sold him a huge the Baker facility on Highway 311. I have heard rumors that he might start uh, making uh, uh, semiconductors, computer chips to go in automobile. Uh, I don't know if he told you that, but that's that's what I've heard. Anyway. So you can see how everything is expanded. I uh, I've just I've just seen this this country or this parish grow. Uh, it's it's absolutely amazing. It uh, it just never seems to stop, and uh, the housing business has never stopped. They're still building brand new houses. Uh, industry is more industry is moving in, and uh, whether we ever can replace the oil and gas business, I really don't know. Uh, but if that goes, uh, something else will come. Maybe we'll start building batteries. <laughs> I guess the worst challenge I faced was uh, in the early 1980s when the oil field collapsed. Uh, we took the position and Jim Walter agreed with us that we will not have a fire sale of the property that we have for sale. We will continue to maintain the prices that we want for the property that we think it's worth as far as utilities concerned. And uh, so we maintained our price level, our sales went down to nothing, <laughs> uh, which was which was very, uh, it was a, uh, kind of a, uh, a bad period for us. Unfortunately, at that time, I had started doing real estate appraisals. And as the banks begin to repossess property, uh, there is a, a rule from the Comptroller of the Currency that says that the bank's property has to be reappraised every year. <laughs> and so 
at that point in time, I had a, uh, an alternate source of income. And that was very nice, and I developed a, uh, a pretty good uh, business out of it, and uh, that expanded, and I began to get regular customers and did reappraisals, and, and so that was, that was nice. And then, eventually, uh, the oil field came back. Not as I wouldn't have traded anything to have lived in Carabon Parish in the 70s. That was wonderful. Uh, if we had a piece of property for sale for $250,000 and somebody said, I'll offer you $200,000 for it, we'd say we're going to sell it tomorrow for somebody for two fifty, dollars and we did. Uh, so that was the market, and it was, it was a wonderful market. But the crash, that was, that was the most uh, challenging part of my uh, career. What I've seen mostly is a switch over from freestanding industrial properties like somebody like Delta would, would buy a piece of property and they would locate wherever they wanted to. And it could be that they would locate next to some subdivision houses and whatnot, uh, which is not really a good idea. But uh, it's now beginning to look like and it has for quite a number of years, uh, started to cluster in industrial parks. Uh, I would say we were the second one <laughs> in, uh, in Terrebonne Parish. Uh, the first one was by the Prospect Street Bridge, uh, and uh, that was developed by Steve Hebert. And then we, uh, we started our subdivision and uh, we developed about 3,000 acres. Uh, most of that's all sold now. And uh, then they stood, subdivision started popping up in various places, but that has been the main change, I think, is the location in their own areas where they don't interfere with anybody else. And that, has basically been uh, driven by federal regulations, the flood, flood insurance program. Uh, basically all of East Homa is, uh, <laughs> is in a flood zone of some sort, one way or the other. Uh, and, and that's a problem because uh, a lot of the industries from out of state uh, that move into Terrebonne Parish, their uh, rules and regulations and their insurers and everything will not allow them to locate in a flood zone, whether it's flood insurance or not. So uh, that, I think, caused the move into North Terrebonne Parish. And uh, uh, once again, uh, the closer you get to the coast, uh, the worse your insurance problem is, and that's that's causing East Homa to uh, to not expand as much as it probably should. Now let's see. If you go back to the beginning, I think uh, uh, when Jim Walter bought the South Coast Corporation and they own 30,000 acres of property in Terrebonne Parish. Uh, it was on their books for 25 cents an acre. <laughs> and so we started developing property and along Grand Kaya Road, we were selling industrial and commercial lots for $10,000 an acre. And they're basically one acre lots and like $10,000 a piece. Uh, today, that same lot would be 40 to 50 to $60,000 an acre. I think it's, it's still the good earth. And uh, 
if the federal government would leave us alone, I think we'd be in great shape. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, but I do see us continuing to be a thriving community. Uh, I think we will do very well in the, in the medical business. Uh, people are getting older. They have more health problems uh, as they age. Uh, and uh, so I, I think there's a good future. Uh, I don't see the expansion uh, coming as fast as it did in the 70s and, and the 80s. I, I really, it's got to slow down. Uh, and it is slowing down. Uh, but it's still, we're still building houses. We're still building new industrial buildings, commercial buildings. Of course, we're tearing down a lot of commercial buildings after Ida. And uh, that, was, that was a horrible hit. It really was. Uh, I have... I lived through Betsy. Uh, I had uh, uh, Gustav went right over my house <laughs> and uh, didn't didn't harm a thing. Lost a few shingles, but not much. Yeah, but this Ida, it wiped us out. Uh, so uh, that's going to be a problem in the future too, because I have a feeling that our insurance, federal insurance program is going to increase tremendously in cost. Uh, flood insurance is going to be almost uh, uh, unavailable again, really is. It was, it was land, mostly we were in the land development business. That's what uh, uh, my father had been a mechanical contractor and he shut his business down. And, went into the real estate business and uh, then got into this, uh, uh, this partnership with uh, Jim Walter in developing land. Uh, started off changing sugarcane land into, uh, into industrial and commercial land and that was first sale that I made in that area was $10,000. Uh, I, <laughs> I, I, I'd never got involved in the, in the residential business because I think the first house I showed, uh, the lady didn't want to buy it because of the color of the bathroom. And I thought to myself, there's got to be a better way to earn a living. <laughs> I mean, and so we concentrated on developing property where somebody, if they could make a dollar by using that property in their business, they'd buy it. And uh, so that's, that's where that started. Best I've ever seen. I, would, I, I wouldn't give anything not to have been here. <laughs> it was wonderful. And more the oil and gas business, it was the boom of the, uh, uh, the, the people that supplied the products to the oil and gas people. They, you know, it, the, uh, the support industry expanded tremendously. Uh, and the bigger oil companies got out of the business of uh, uh, of providing everything themselves and they started renting tools and uh, buying property that, that other people had invented and whatnot. And so that, uh, that was a huge change and, and, and we took advantage of that in Terrebonne Parish, yeah. Uh, we're closer to the Gulf of Mexico, but you know, we're still 40 miles <laughs> to the coast and that, uh, that helps a lot. The, uh, the navigation canal was a big asset, uh, although some people think it's a ditch that ought to be filled up. Uh, but that has brought a tremendous amount of industry uh, and oil field uh, into Homa, Louisiana. Really, really was a big asset. And uh, I congratulate the police jury at that time for having the foresight to dig that because it was dug 
uh, with parish tax money, and then it's given over to the Corps of Engineers for maintenance. 